Don't idolize any leaders above Jesus. And let me also tell you this. Don't idolize any leader above the church. The other place where God has made a safety net for you is the body of Christ, the local body of Christ. I know people who are members of a church, but they will not submit to the church. They will submit to someone else. Or they will even say things like, well, I'm part of this church, but I listen to this leader. I don't listen to anyone else. I listen to this person. I don't listen to any other leader in that church. You are in error, my child. You are in danger. It's the body of Christ together where there is a safety. The church is bigger than me. Amen. I don't want you to be loyal to me above the church. Are you with me? Understand this. Because men will come and go. Men are imperfect. But the body of Christ, the local body of Christ, it will continue. See, the local church is where God's heart, God's will, and God's power and love manifest to the community. Don't ever despise the local church and look down on it and exalt other leaders above it. I tell you, it is very wrong. And if any of your leaders are saying, oh, you don't have to listen to this leader, you don't have to listen to this church, whatever they say, follow me, be careful. Your loyalty to the local church is above your loyalty even to the pastor. Because we will go. After 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, other leaders will come. And you should not be saying, well, I used to like this pastor, but now he's not there anymore, so I will not go to church anymore. A lot of people are like that, right? That's foolish. That's foolishness. So that tells me that that, that young boy, that young girl, something's wrong in their heart. They have not understood the truth. They're not ready for ministry yet. They're not ready for leadership. Because as ugly, as immature, as, as imperfect, as dull, whatever you may say about the local church, I tell you, that's where Jesus' heart and love is. The local church is His bride. You must love the local church because that's the way you express your love to Jesus. Because that's the way you get protected. See, a lot of these deception that I've seen in people's life are people who don't come regularly to church. They don't get the word and the teaching from the local church wherever they are part of. They just roam around, stray from this prayer center to this house to this. And then when they get a so-called word, they don't even discuss it with the leaders. And that's how they get deceived. Why? Satan always separates the sheep from the shepherd, sheep from the flock, right? And then when he's separated you, he will come and put his fangs into you. That's how it happens. And that's why life group deja vu day. In the end. Why? Because this is what God is saying in these days. Listen, the four horsemen are coming. I'm not being a prophet of doom, but we see it all around media, all around the world. A cr increase of Crisis, famine in parts of the world is going to grow. War, strife, death, diseases, deception. Lies, deception. So much in your face in these days. That's why the church needs to come together more. More fellowship. That's why this life group things is not just a program. It's what the Lord led us. That the church must connect in praying together, fellowshipping together, meeting together. There is protection and safety. I know of a lot of people who testified, my staff tell me, that when they went to the prayer group, the confirmation from God came. They were confused, but when they went to the, that life group and they were sitting and discussing, then God spoke to them and they were like, oh yes, now I understand. It's not only in church. In the life groups.